Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in today to Faithfully Her. I am your girl, Liana Michelle, and today um, I have a very special guest on with me today who I'm really excited about being um, on the show to speak to us. I listened in on her Facebook platform um, one evening when she was discussing being saved and single and what that truly means in the form of dating and so forth, and I was so inspired by the way she spoke and the information she was given. I wanted to have her come on and share that information with everyone else. So if you guys can join me in a round of applause, we are welcoming Miss Whitney Monique Jones. Yay! My, my clap uh, <laughs> app is always off centered. I'm so bad with technology. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's always off. <laughs> How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for, you know, taking the time <laughs> out and being willing to come on and share this platform with me. I really do appreciate you. Sure. I appreciate you inviting me on here. It's um, exciting. It's exciting. Yeah. It is exciting, especially, um, you know, I'm probably a little bit older than you. We're not going to tell how much, though. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Growing up in church, all, you know, growing up in church all your life and, you know, reading the Bible and so forth. And then, mm -hmm. you know, you get into that, that space where you kind of break away from it. And you start living in the world and you're living your life and you're doing your thing. And for me, coming back into the foes of it, um, saying, you know, not that I ever left Jesus or he ever left me. You know, I've always been a prayer and, you know, I've always believed in the Lord and things like that. But I was just out in the streets, so to speak. And mm -hmm. now coming back and yeah. saying, you know what, I don't want to be living that life no more. I don't want to do all of that. That's like, it's nothing out there for me. I'm happy with just me and Jesus right now. You know what I'm saying? So coming back into that as a saved yeah. and single woman, the dating scene, the dating scene is a lot different for me. Um, so I really mm -hmm. wanted to talk about that because there's a lot of people that might be in my shoes that's not saying it out loud you know, or keeping those right. things bottled in. And um, I think it's just an important topic to share. And especially even for the younger yeah. generation, because I was telling my son, like, I want you to listen to this. And he was like, man, leave me oh. alone. <laughs> but I'm like, even for the younger generation, you know, if you're in your walk with Christ and then you're being pressured, you know, to yeah. do things that you may not feel comfortable with doing, yeah. And you're trying to find that balance between it all. So I'm really happy to have you on here to discuss these things with us. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so um, I know that you are a, um, a professional woman, but what I didn't get in the bio was um, what exactly is your license? Um, so I... I graduated last summer uh, with my master's degree in clinical mental health. So I then took my license. So now I'm a licensed professional counselor and I received that license in January. So I'm a newly licensed professional counselor. Yes. So that is my profession. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Yay. That is good. I have my master's <laughs> in psychology as well. And I've worked in the mental health industry um, for several years. So yeah, mm -hmm. congratulations. Yeah. And that's definitely Thank needed. You. Thank you. Thank um, you. You know, is. mental health is something that we kind of ride off as, oh, they just got a drug problem or whatever. Right. Um, but what I've learned working in the mental health um, industry is a lot of those substance abuse problems are from something they didn't just you mm -hmm. know wake up one day and say I want to be an alcoholic and therefore they became an alcoholic yeah. they were doing that to kind of yeah. drown something or to run from something an experience or something that they had that seems to be haunting mm -hmm. them 
And if mm-hmm. we look at it from that angle as to what did this baby experience, what did this person go through? Let's see if we can get them to talk it, say it out loud so we can work through that pain. Then maybe we can help with the substance abuse issues. But so many people just kind of brush yeah. it off as, oh, they just a crackhead and want to walk away from it, but don't want to see the whole picture. So kudos to you for taking that endeavor and jumping into that because we definitely need more mental health professionals. Yes, we do. It's a need for sure. Definitely. Yes, it really is. Yeah, it is. So I'm going to ask you the million dollar question. Are you single? (laughs) Yes, I am single. I am single. (laughs) See, Trey, she's single, Trey. Oh, (laughs) Lord Jesus. Girl, I'm always trying to get my son hooked up with a professional woman. So. <laughs> like she's oh, smart, man. she's pretty. Come on. That is- <laughs> so as a are you dating or do you date right now? Um, I am open to dating, you know, it's not like in I'm not really actively dating right now if that makes sense but I am open to it right now I'm just really trying to focus on you know my profession and this platform that I'm that I'm working with right now as it relates to being single because I really want to help other people it's a part of my purpose so I'm trying to just really focus on my purpose right now and you know I have friends you know that I might talk to here and there um, but I'm not dating. And, um, but like I said, I'm doing whatever God wants to do, that's just kind of how I am. You know, I want his will to be done. I don't want to overstep. I don't want to take control. I want to be like in the passenger seat and he, he be the driver. Right. Right. Um, I just want to make sure I'm doing things as he would have me to do them. So, um, open to it, but not actively dating right now. So. I'm going to take a quick little sidebar because you mentioned the word purpose. And um, I did an episode uh, not too long ago about turning your pain into um, power for purpose. Mm -hmm. And I spoke about how, you know, there are past experiences that I've gone through, other people have gone through, but how you could turn that pain and turn it into a power for a, for a greater purpose, something bigger Mm -hmm. than who Mm -hmm. you are and what you are. And like, for me, I have just in the recent, like real recent come to find out that a lot of the pain and traumatic experiences that I went through then were, was setting me up for the purpose of helping people because Mm -hmm. I'm always want to give a helping hand. I always want to do what I can to fix it or whatever, you know what I'm saying? I put myself right. in that line, in that line of fire to try to help somebody else through their situation. So I'm wondering, was there something yes. that um that triggered or or created this this platform for you that made you say, you know what, I'm done with this. I'm just gonna be saved and single and I'm gonna tell everybody else to, you know, or was or was it just a divine intervention? Um, I feel like at one point I really wanted to be married like early in life. Um, I thought I was gonna be married by 25, have kids by like 30, you know, I had my whole life planned out. Um, but God basically was like, no, that's not the plan that I have for you. So I was going through, you know, different relationships and you know just really having that desire to want to be in a relationship and be married but I don't know when it was but I think as time went by and the experiences that I've that I experienced with these different relationships I'm just like this is not working this isn't working and um I just realized that I know I'm not the only person going through these things you know these struggles and wanting to be married, but it's not time yet. So what do I do in the midst of it? You know, so it was like, at some point, you know, God was just like, this is what I want you to focus on. And actually, I feel like I really, really delved into it, delved into it when the pandemic started, when COVID-19 started. I was like in a place of isolation and it was just like, there was nothing else for me to do really, you know? Um, And God, I'm like, God is like, okay, now is your chance to really push this thing, you know? 
And I've actually had a desire to help other singles for years, but I'm really just now coming into it, you know, and being that I'm living it, like I know I can help somebody else because I'm actually living it. I'm not just telling people about it. This right. is actually living it for me. So right. that's what yeah. And that's what makes it so so good because a lot of times you hear people pointing the finger and they're yeah. telling you what you should be doing, what you better be doing, do as I say, not as I do type of a thing. Right. But when yep. you're actually walking in it as well, which is why I kind of like what I'm doing now because I'm talking about my journey. So it's not like, yeah. oh, I'm so holy and then thou and saved and I never exactly. committed a sin. Right. <laughs> It's like, great. Right. tell y'all what I did last night. I had to ask God for forgiveness. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I'm yeah. in the same yeah. situation yeah. with you. I'm going through this same trials and tribute like with you. So hopefully together we mm -hmm. can help each other get to the other side right. and be better for it. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I mm -hmm. definitely can appreciate absolutely. that. Um, and so for me being single, <laughs> no let me okay let me say this differently okay so being single is not really hard like I enjoy being single I enjoy being yeah my own person not having to answer to anybody I don't like having people in my house like that like they be on time limits I'd be like oh my god it's three o'clock you've been here for like two hours <laughs> you know what I'm saying so, right 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 I'm just I'm real yeah. to myself yeah, I, I don't want to have to clean up after nobody I don't want to have to cook for nobody like I have finally gotten to a place where I am mm -hmm. so happy being in my space <laughs> by myself I don't know how to invite somebody into it you know so um but when you're combining the the challenges of being saved and single what are the um what are the biggest well yeah what are the biggest challenges that you face because you know being saved is being saved and i read my bible i praise the lord i pray i meditate fast so forth and so on and I'm great being single, but when you put the two together, where is that balance? How do you navigate that? Well, I think the first, that word you said, balance is super important, is actually balancing the two because um, you have to balance it. You can't let one overtake the other, you know? So it's like, um, when you think about um, being single and saved, like you said, you like your space. You like, you don't like people coming over and all that stuff. But when you're single and saved, you know, you have to work in ministry. You have to be, you have to be in front of people. You have to communicate with people. You have to um, work in ministry with other people. So that, that bubble, bubble that you have at home, you kind of have to try to let that go when it comes to the ministry aspect of it. Right. Um, that's one of the challenges I feel too, because I'm I'm like an introvert. I love my personal space, right. you know, and I had to learn to really be open to ministry as it relates to other people, greeting them, praying with them like that. That can you can be taken out of your comfort zone and doing that. Um, but it also builds your character too. It helps you be more um, people oriented. And, and even if you think about it, when you date, someone you have to bring them into your space so it's kind of like a learning curve and it helps you be more um open to talking to people and so when you do date you'll have a con you can it, it won't be weird to have a conversation with someone but also when you think about being single and safe and you think about the dating as aspect of it one of the um some of the issues that people have or concerns is that what are people going to think if they know I'm single and saved and I'm dating? You know, what are people going to say? You know, some people might say, well, they, they, they got to be having sex. They got, you know what I'm saying? You have, you have to, you worry about what other people think. And that's, that's one of the other ones. And worrying that you might fall into temptation, mm -hmm. you know, going on a date, being single in that dating stage. And then you're like, but I'm also, you know, a follower of Jesus Christ and I don't want to disappoint him. So I have to make sure I'm doing what I need to do so that I won't fall into temptation. You know, that's another aspect. Of it. But ultimately, really wanting to be in God's will. So when you want to be in God's will, you're always saying, Lord, what does that look like? I don't want to 
get come out of your will. So you're constantly looking at the decision, decisions that you're making, the people that you're inviting into your life, because you worry like, okay, is this person a part of your will? You know, what am I supposed to be doing this? Am I supposed to be doing that? So those are some of the things that you might struggle with while being single and safe. And it's a joke. It's, actually, it sounds like a lot. It, it does sound like a lot. <laughs> but, you know, when you really just focus on, on God, like let him be the center, you know, and make sure that you're doing, you, you know, you're following his instruction. I, I feel like everything else is just going to flow. It won't be hard, you know? Mm -hmm. So those are some of the main issues I personally have dealt with too, um, in trying to balance being single and safe. Right. And, you know, um, especially with today's era, uh, you know, social media, everything is sexual, yeah. everything from, you know, music to commercials, to TV shows, yeah. like you can't turn on mm -hmm. anything without it being something that is going to say something yeah. or give you a visual of something sexual. So what would be your advice right. to that younger generation, you know, or even your generation, whichever one, but that's yeah. coming up in this, this media era and, and sex is just thrown in there. I mean, they're being told that, you know, the little waist and the big butts and voluptuous chest yeah. <laughs> is the, the ideal, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you can get the, the man with the money and the cars and this and that. And, you know, if you do an OnlyFans page and put yourself out there, you can make all of this money and all your dreams yeah. will come. Like they just, they promote so much sexual stuff. I'm happy yeah. I don't have a daughter. Like, Ooh, honest yeah. to God, I'm <laughs> so happy I do not have a daughter because she would probably yes. be locked in the closet <laughs> in some darkness with yeah. no outlets to anything because I would be so afraid of the lessons she'll be learning watching a regular TV program. So what advice would you give to that generation? Well, ultimately we know that the, the devil is the prince of the air, you know, where our surroundings. So he tries to control everything in our area to in, in influence us uh, negatively to get us from being on the path of, of holiness and righteousness and living for God. So it's so easy to be distracted by it because we actually live in this world. You know, we're, we're, we're not supposed to be of the world, but we do live in it. So it is so easy to be distracted by everything that's going on. But I think we have to realize, I think we have to come to the conclusion that these things are distractions. Like we literally have to be mindful of that every time, everywhere we go. But right. one thing I'll say is to watch what you watch who you follow on social media, watch what you listen to on social media, um, even on television, all of those things. It's, it's kind of like you're, you're like a child, you know, when you're growing up, your parents say, don't watch that. You can't listen to that. You're not allowed to do this. You literally have to put those, those things, um, restrictions on yourself when it comes to that, because ultimately you're saving yourself from falling into temptation and, and, and sinning. And it's, it's not that we want to put these restrictions on ourselves because um, we just want to be obedient to God. But when you love God, you will follow his commandments. It won't be a, um, it won't be restriction in that sense, or it won't seem like it's something miserable that you're doing. You're actually protecting yourself, you know, because you want, you want what God has for you. And these right. things that we are, that we indulge in can separate us from that, you know, and it can get us on the wrong path. So we have to be careful. And this is me too, because I love movies. Listen, I love movies. I'm a movie person. Sometimes I might watch something. I'm like, oh, just, let me skip past this or let me change this channel because it, it affects me too. So we really have to be careful who we follow, who we listen to, what we watch. Right. And I was going to say, you know, is there a difference in the age generations? But honestly, it's not because I'm 46 now no, and it's people that my age that has fan only pages. And I'm like, isn't she like 50 years old? What is she doing? You know what I'm saying? So yes. it's, it's not I'm even you. a big gap in the ages when it comes to the images that yeah. I put out there 
because you know you have older women trying to look younger so they can yeah. hang with the young girls and do what they're doing and the blinds are just so blurred um yeah that they it's, are it's frightening you know it, it can be really frightening and you know like I was telling you before my son is um he'll be 26 in June and mm -hmm. I'm always asking him like are you dating somebody what does she do who <laughs> is she does she go to church do she pray and he like yeah. mom I work like 18 hours a day I don't even have time to date and I'm like well I'm just mm -hmm. making sure and you know, right. invite your friends over. I'll be there for the right. week and I want to meet everybody. Like I am, and yeah. you just be like, yeah. my friends do not want to meet you. <laughs> and, and it's almost like, and I'm like, but I want to meet them just because I want to make sure that you yeah. are surrounding yourself with good people, positive people, people who mm -hmm. was raised with some kind of sense of God and understanding of right from wrong and some moral fibers, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I'm always yeah, like trying yeah. to jump in the middle of his business to kind of figure right. out what's going yeah. on with him. And, you yeah. know, and I think that's important though. I think a lot of times parents are too lax. They mm -hmm. give too much freedom. And yeah. then when their 13 year old comes home pregnant, they don't understand why. Why, right. Yeah, and it's like, well, maybe because you were not paying attention, you know what I'm saying? Or you wasn't asking the questions you should have been asking. And yeah, you know, you wasn't calling the school or checking up at school to make sure that they actually showed up. You know, my mother right. was that mom who we didn't have a vehicle. She was a single parent. She was working and putting herself back through school, but she made friends with my teachers and my counselors and like, they would come yeah. over, they'll pop up at the house on Saturday for lunch. And I'm like, wow. why is my <laughs> teacher here? You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. She, she built that relationship with them because she knew she was working and mm -hmm. she needed to make sure I was being monitored even when she yeah. couldn't do it personally. And I think we right. lose that a lot in this this new era, this newer age, you know, as mm -hmm. we started having kids, we got out of the practices that a, a lot of the practices that our parents did that actually were good. Like they kept, it kept me in line. It got me here and, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not a bad person. So yay to my yeah. mama. Right. <laughs> Kudos to her. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Okay, so how should a single and saved person date? Oh, okay, so that can be so broad. Um, I think the, the main thing we have to understand is that when you're dating, you're, I heard someone say this, like you're gathering data, like you're gathering information from the people that you're dating. So that does not mean that you're dating multiple people and you're sleeping with them and you know, right. you're, you're, Doing sexual things with them. That's not what gathering information has nothing to do with that. That's literally. And let me just interject real quick to everybody that's listening. Uh -huh. Dating does not equal sex. They're not the same thing. Because yes. you hear that a lot. Yes. People are like, oh my gosh, she dating all these people. She loose. Why does right. why, why does dating have to equal sex? It does is not the same. I could go out on a date with you and five minutes right. in, don't like you and walk away sex was never a part of the right. equation. You know what I'm saying? So right. make sure that's yes. understood. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So um, that's literally what it is, is gathering information about someone. So well, when it comes to being single, um, saved and dating, you just want to make sure that you have some boundaries. I mean, pretty much have boundaries, but you also have to know yourself, like those things that you, uh, that make you weak those things that you can't handle, you have to um, integrate those things into the boundaries that you set. And ultimately, your boundaries should have some kind of foundation of, you know, from the word of God, because of course, we know uh, fornication is wrong, you know, all those kind of things, making sure that the boundaries that you set help you not fall into those kind of situations. So, you know, right. can't specifically say what your boundaries are, but you have to know what you can what you can and cannot handle so, so if you lady, can't have anyone at your i'm sorry real quick <laughs> so lady yes. if a foot rub yes. makes you spread your legs don't let him rub your feet boundary right <laughs> right <laughs> exactly 
if you can't have someone at your house at midnight, don't have that's that has to be part of your boundaries. I will not allow anyone at my over to my place at midnight. If you can't be in an intimate setting at all, then you have to go out in public. You know, so you have to be able to make those boundaries, set those boundaries that will help you keep yourself whole, you know, without having to fall into sexual temptation. And it's so easy to fall into to sexual um, temptation. It's so easy, you know, but set those boundaries and you stick to them, it really helps you. And of course, prayer and fasting and just, you know, communicating with God, make sure, you know, what he's telling you to do, following his direction, but also just setting boundaries. You know, it, it can be as simple as that. And, so. you know, um, I I always pray like, Lord, give me the strength and, and the, the, the encouragement, give me the wisdom and the insight into myself so I could be strong enough to say no to this, to say no to that, to Mm -hmm. not engage in this, to not engage in that, and then not feel bad about it. Not feel bad because I had to tell this person no, or I couldn't go over here, or you know what I'm saying, or whatever. Right, right. So that's important too, to make sure that you make that a part of your daily prayer, you know, and if you have to say it in the middle of your drive time, just say it however it goes and ask the Lord to give you that strength. And you know, and if you're serious and sincere in your prayer and you trust and believe God for who and what he ultimately is, he will do those things for you. He'll give you that strength. Right. And also, side note, if there is someone that you are entertaining and they don't want to follow those boundaries, then you need to cut them off. Yeah. Because you are esteeming yourself. You are literally wanting to, this is for you. This is for you. Nobody else can do for you but yourself. So right. you have to one to set those boundaries and stick with them and not allow somebody else to change them, curve them, do anything at all, nothing at all to them. Stick with them. Like, this is what it is. And if you can't understand and agree, then you have to go. Right. So, yeah. And it's funny because um, next week, my topic will be boundaries. (laughs) As um, my topic for next week. Yeah. I've been doing my little research and homework and going through Bible scriptures and everything to Mm -hmm. expound on what it is to set boundaries and to stand by your boundaries and it's something that I need to know for myself which is why I figured I'll talk about it publicly um so yeah boundaries are important and you do have to Mm -hmm. know yourself like you said like if you know you know like okay so I have a friend and he and I have had to have this conversation about the time of day he calls me you know, don't call me after 9 30, 10 Mm -hmm. o'clock at night, because for one, I'm probably in the bed. And for two, I'm taking it as an insult because there's nothing for us to talk about at 10 PM, unless it's an emergency. And if it's an emergency and I'll answer the phone, then you should probably leave me a voicemail or shoot me a text message and say, 911, this is an emergency to get me to respond. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I get insulted personally when I get phone calls after a certain hour at night. And I have had multiple conversations with him where I'm like, so what do you think I am? Am I like a booty call or something? Like, don't call me that late. Like, don't. Yeah. And I mean it. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. And and we've, I've had to be like so stern and firm in those conversations with him, but now he understands it and he gets it. And now he respects that boundary. So like, even today okay. he was like, I was going to call you last night, but I saw it was nine 30. So I decided to wait till the morning and I'm like, you did the right thing. Cause I probably wouldn't have answered. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm happy right. he was able to recognize right. that. Boundary. You already know that. Right. Hear me when I said it. And now he can, now he's obeying the boundary yeah. rule. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, don't be afraid, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Don't be afraid to tell somebody, hey, this is my boundary. Don't do this. I do not appreciate these things. These things do not work for me. You know, don't be afraid. Because right. I know a lot of times we expect, well, I'm going to say for me, um, mm-hmm. which I'm working on. A lot of times I'm afraid to say what I feel. Yeah. And I won't 
verbalize mm-hmm. it or be out, you know, be outspoken with it because I'm mm-hmm. afraid that I'm going to lose that friendship or I'm going to lose that relationship or yeah. I'm going to throw a wrench in the plan. So for something like that, what would you advise somebody that struggles with that part of themselves? Well, like I said before, you are the only one that can really do for yourself. And I get the, I get that sometimes because I deal with that too. Like, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. You know, I don't want them to look at me this way. I, because sometimes I do, I, I get concerned with how people view me. Yeah. You know, I don't want them to think of me as a bad, evil person. But this is protecting me. This is me. I want to be protected. I want to do what's right. I want to make sure that the people that are connected to me can respect my boundaries. Because if they don't, I'll continue to fall lower and lower. Right. I'll continue to remove from my boundaries and eventually they'll be gone. Right. And then what? We blame it on a person. Right. We blame it on our, we made that decision and that choice. We allow outside influence to interrupt our protection. Mm-hmm. And then you, you mad at yourself and you got to go all, you got to start all over again. Mm-hmm. No, I'm good. You know, you have to, you have to be able to be that strong for your own self with the strength of God, of course, but you have to be stern in that. If people can't respect your boundaries, they don't respect you. What does that tell you? Right. So. Right. And you, you're absolutely right. We do have to learn how to be strong for ourselves, especially in this single and safe walk. Um, and I know yeah. like being strong for myself has been something that, you know, I've battled with through like always looking for somebody else to fight for me or looking for that strong person mm-hmm. on my behalf and learning yeah. how to stand up and be strong for myself is something that's kind of yeah. new, but it's liberating. And I feel so good sometimes when I'm like, I stood up yeah. to them, you know what I'm saying? So, right, right, it feels good, it does. Yeah, it's like a, a sense of pride that I've never had in myself or never thought, because yeah. I never thought I was capable of it. So, you know, if you mm-hmm. think like, if you're out there and you're thinking that, you know, maybe I can't do this or, um, you know, I don't want to hurt this person feelings or I don't want to say the wrong thing. Yeah. You know what? Take that deep breath and just say it, do it. Because at the end of the yeah. day, I'm 46 years old and I can be <clears throat> honestly tell you, nobody is going to fight for you, protect you, care mm-hmm. about you, love you, want to see you win more than you want to see it in yourself. So if we keep sitting yes. here waiting for somebody else to do it for us, it'll never get done. And the things right. that are getting done are being done in a haphazard way. Mm-hmm. So it's never at 100%. Right. So, you know, stand up and take that gusto and do it for yourself and be proud of, of your voice. You know, mm-hmm. I always say, um, I heard this on a different world a long time ago, and it's one of my favorite little things. I have it on my wind, on my mirror. You are a voice in this world and you deserve to be heard. So, you know, um, you are a voice in this world and you deserve to be heard. So don't let nobody take that from you. Absolutely. Um, So where are we? I think we already talked about this as far as what led you to your to this particular topic of being saved and single um, to where you decided to make it a public a public forum for people. Yeah. Well, actually, the single and safe part of it has been in me for a long time. But actually, this past February, I started a single and safe series. So this is an online show that talks about the single life, the saved and single life. And just I I just bring uh, different speakers on guests to talk about certain topics. And there are a lot of things that I'm working on that are so exciting. I can't really talk about it, but, you know, it's just, it's a way to kind of open up, um, open up to the single people so they can hear that everybody, there are other single people dealing with the same things, you know, and it gives you encouragement and it just is it's to help the single people as a population. And eventually, as I continue to do that, this, the single and safe group that I have, I want that to grow so that 
a single people can have more intimate conversations inside this group about the single life and the struggles that we have. Everybody doesn't want to talk about what they deal with in public, you know? Right. So right. I want to, to, to set up this safe space for us to have dialogue and, and different conversations about those, those difficult things that we struggle with. Because I want to target those things the church doesn't talk about. Because the church, they, they don't talk about those real, those real topics like they should. Um, and then that leaves the single people like, okay, where do I go to have these conversations or where do I go to get help if I talk about it? Right. So I want this to be a forum to where people can come and just be like, hey, this is what I'm dealing with. You know, how can you help me? We need this. People might not want to admit it, but we do. Yes. So. Yes. yes. And you know, I, um, like I was saying, that's how I learned of you is through your <laughs> aunt. Um, okay. Yeah. Your how aunt yeah, she's my supervisor. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so it's okay. a small world. Yeah, she's yeah. my supervisor. Um, okay. And I just love her to pieces. She is just like <laughs> the best ever. Um, yeah, she, she's, 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 she's just a really good person. And I just yeah. love her spirit and her heart. Mm -hmm. And um, and working together, we've grown close to where okay. you know, we have conversations. Yeah. And she, when you had your, your, um, the series, I think it was the first one you did that was in February mm -hmm. and she sent me the invite to okay. it on Facebook. And that's how yeah. I was able to join in that evening and hear and listen gotcha. to you. And I think your sister, it was you and your yep. sister that day. Yep. And I just really enjoyed the conversation and the flow you. and, yeah. you know, the information that you guys were given. And I was just like, mm -hmm. I like these young sisters. Like, <laughs> okay. you know, like y'all was teaching me something. I was learning wow. something from Such you. And I was just like, so inspired by it all. So mm -hmm. what, um, I know you can't talk about everything that you have going on, but when is the next series coming? Will it be on Facebook? What's going on? Yeah. With so I'm actually excited about this one. I did put it out there. Um, this next one is actually next month, May 29th. I believe the date is. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it's the May 29th and it will be on Facebook live. Um, and I'm going to, I usually stream my, my videos on YouTube afterwards too, but this particular um, episode is more of a fun episode. And it's going to be talking about, um, can you be sexy, single, and safe? So about our dress, our parents, you know, if okay. we, you know, we don't have to always wear those dresses that go all the way down to our toes and right. you know, homey, we can still be sophisticated and dress nice. So um, we're going to be doing that. It's going to be in a form. I can't even, I can't tell you that. You just got to watch it. It, it's gonna but be May, but around the end of May, right? Yes, so around the May end of 29. May is gonna be coming on, and I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. Please make sure I get my invite because I will be there. I, I will invite you. you. Yes. yes, yes, I will make sure I'm there to support. And you know, and that is something because you know you do look at um you look at a church going woman and the way she dresses and you have this idea in your head mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. like in my era, we grew up where we had to wear dresses to church. We had Me to wear too. stockings. Mm -hmm. We had to wear dress clothes. And then I remember when the church became a little bit more liberal and said, Hey, just come as you are. You mm -hmm. don't have to be in a dress. You can wear your jeans. You can wear your gym shoes. You can wear a t-shirt. Just come to church. Just come as you mm -hmm. are. And I remember my mother was saying, they might go as they are, but you going in this dress. You know what I'm saying? Like, That's how my mom was. Yeah. She was like, I don't care what they wearing, but I know what you about to mm -hmm. put on. So, yeah. And I can remember Absolutely. that struggle with her because I hated stockings. I hated tights. And I'd be like, can I please just not wear the tights? And she'd be like, you will not embarrass me in church. You putting them tights on. So I know, yeah. Now yeah. as an adult, I don't wear tights or stockings if I don't have to. So, you know, even with, uh, mm -hmm. say, a knee length skirt or a dress that may be right yeah. or below the knee or whatever, I'll just wear boots that come up. Yeah. So my legs are not bare. 
Right. But you know what I'm saying? I don't have to yeah. wear the stockings anymore. I take my mm-hmm. little, um, my scarf, what they call it, your press scarf. So you can throw over mm-hmm. your lap. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't yeah. have to be exposed to the reverend. You know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, I still do right. you know, the respectful things that you yeah, should be yeah. doing in church. But right. yeah, I want to be a little cute sometimes and I don't always want to put no stockings on. So yeah, I think that's yeah. a wonderful topic to have. <laughs> yeah, because it goes along with dating too. I mean, the first, you, you're the first thing the person sees, you know, they want to like what they see too, you know, not saying that it's all about that, but your appearance is everything. Yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be really fun. I can't wait for you guys to see exactly what it is. But it's gonna be fun. Really okay, fun. well, I am so looking forward to it. Um, so let me see here. What do you say to the person who is in the transitioning mode? Um, they are leaving a lot of the worldly things and people behind, behaviors and so forth, studying more of God's words and trying to be more dedicated in their walk with Christ. But they have that, say that special friend that they're mm-hmm. still engaging with, possibly physically. What advice do you give to that person? Um, so That's a long question. I'll say that, you know, everybody's story is different and everybody's life is different. For me, I've always been in the church. You know, I have not gone out and came back in. Of course, I've had my struggles. Of course, I've had my struggles. Um, so I, I'll answer this based off of, you know, what I know in general um, in regards to the questions that you share. Um, But I think the important thing is that it sounds like this person is on the right path. You know, they're trying to do right. They're they're switching up their environment. You know, they're reading God's word, all of those kind of things. Um, I think it's also important that fasting and prayer is included in that because, you know, some things can only be dealt with by fasting and prayer. Matthew 17, 21 talks about that. Um, It gets, it's because sometimes we have strongholds that we have in our lives and it's hard to disconnect from those strongholds Mm -hmm. you know man fasting and prayer can really break down those strongholds because we're we are uh starving our flesh you know and when we starve our flesh the spirit is able to come in and do what it's supposed to do Mm -hmm. so i think that's important but i also feel like um you know keeping our environment clean you know continually like you said removing ourselves from the environment that keeps us bound and replacing those environments or those people with people who can help us so I would say accountability partners are very important and accountability community is very important making sure you go to a church that can embrace you um that can love you and that can help you every church can't do that so you be a part of a, a ministry that that really can help you um, deal with those kind of things in love. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes ministry is like, you can't do this, you can't do that. If you're doing this, you don't need, you don't need to be here. That is right. not a uh, ministry you need to be a part of. You know, we God, God's greatest command is love. And when we do things in love, that really brings about a change in God's people. Mm-hmm. So important. And understanding that God can deliver us from anything, but we have to do our part. It's not just God stepping in and taking over. We have to show him that we trust that he can do whatever it is that we need to do and that our heart is in the right place. Right. Um, and I have some other notes with it. I, uh, and slowly try to limit those normal behaviors. You know, um, I know everything doesn't happen overnight. God can't do anything. He can make something go away just like that. However, that's not always the case. But right. slowly just remove those behaviors, replacing those behaviors and moving away from that environment that we're used to being in is, I think is very important. Um, But ultimately just submitting to God, living, having his Holy Spirit within us that can help us fight those things that gives us the strength really to, to come against those fleshly desires that we have. Um, And then also submitting ourselves to God. The scripture says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit first resist the devil, and then he will flee from you. Mm-hmm. So that's so important. And, um, you know, just, um, let me look at my notes here. Yeah, resistance. Okay, so when you resist the devil, it's, you think of resistance, it's like some kind of force. It's the refusal to accept or comply with something, you yeah. know, to attempt to prevent 
something by action or you know or argument so when you say resist the devil that's just not okay devil i want you to leave me alone you have to fight right, right. you literally have to fight you know right so just a combination of those things and there's probably so much more i could say about that but ultimately being involved in a community who can love you who can teach you the truth and help you um in that area and keeping yourself from do- that toxic environment that you were a part of you know i know for me it's um i have to stay busy yeah. So if I'm home and I don't have anything to do and I start getting fidgety, mm-hmm. what they say, idle hands are the devil's workshop. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I start getting fidgety, yes. I don't have anything to do. So mm-hmm. for me, what's, um, what's helping me a lot is volunteering. So, mm-hmm. you know, calling up to church every week and say, okay, what y'all have going on? Yep. Where can I fit this in my schedule? I get off work this day at such and such time. I could come from this time to that time to do the church. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And yep. just kind of volunteering my time that way it helps me from Mm -hmm. sitting here looking at the phone, waiting on that phone call right? or making that phone call myself saying, what you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like it it helps me (laughs) to replace that behavior with something else that's positive and volunteering is a positive behavior. So um, yeah, Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with you as far as changing the environment and being around people in your environment that are loving and supportive. Yeah. And I thank God for um, my mentors or my big sister, so to speak, in the church. Because, you know, yeah. they're matter of fact, they're like, girl, I did that when I was 22. Listen, let me tell you. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so it's not a judgment zone, but it's embracing you and saying, hey, yes. I've been here. I've walked that walk. Let me pray with you. Let me give you some encouragement or, right. you know, something like that. So you're absolutely right. That matters. Mm-hmm that matters it does yeah it does it really does yeah so anything else you want to tell us about um how can people get in touch with you for um like just it, it, whether they are looking for a mental health it, it, um information yeah things on being saved and single your your webinars or anything like that how can we get in touch with you um, so right now I'm just like on the basic um, social media platform. My name is Whitney Monique Jones. You can find me on Facebook. Um, I also have a single and saved uh, page where I share different content and things like that on Facebook. Um, and also that single and saved group, which is a private group that I have not really um, pushed too hard yet because I, I want to really push this single and save serious thing. But I post all of that information on my Facebook pages, single and save. The and is the and symbol, not and in word. Um, you can just pop, put that in and you should, I should pop up. I have like a pink profile, you, you'll see it. And my name is Whitney Morning Jones. And on Instagram, it's S-A-S-S, sass underscore single and saved. So um, that's how you can find me on Instagram as well. So those are the only platforms that I have at this time. Um, may be different in the future, but that's how you can contact me. Well, I'm going to make sure I include all of this information in the description box for anybody that's tuning in that wants to learn more, want to talk more, um, want to be invited possibly to the next series on Single and Save, which is coming to end of May. And I'm so excited yeah. about um, <laughs> anything else you want to share with us, anything you can share mm-hmm. about what might be to come or... Um, yeah, I, I guess I'll just say that um, in regards to being single and saved, to make sure you give yourself grace. We are going to make mistakes. You know, we're not going to be perfect. But just to remember that there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ. So when we do fall and make those mistakes, don't allow the enemy to keep you down and keep you there. Get back up because God's grace is there waiting for you. Um, not that you take advantage of it, but, you know, just realizing that you will make mistakes and just get right back up and keep going. Um, you have to give yourself grace on this time, on this journey, because it, it can be difficult. Um, but I want to just make sure I help as many people as I can talk about as many conversations as I can, real conversations that need to be talked about. And hopefully, whoever you are, you will be there to hear it and benefit from it and share as well if you have anything that you want to share or any questions that you have. Um, I'm hoping that this platform will definitely be a help to you. So 
And I'm sure it will. And in the words of, um, is that Kirk Franklin? I'm not, or is it Donnie McClurkin? Oh my God, I'm not sure who sung the song. But a saint is just the sinner who fell down and got back up. Donnie McClurkin. Donnie, okay. I knew it was a, mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, and to piggyback on what you're saying, you know, the, the devil's job is to come and kill, steal, and destroy. His destroy, job is yeah. to do whatever he can to get you out of Christ's grasp. So, you know, when mm -hmm. you trip and you make that mistake and you stumble and you fall, don't stay down. I had to learn this lesson to stop beating myself up on mm -hmm. every little thing. Yeah. Like, you know, I will go to God and say, Lord, please forgive me for this. I'm so sorry for this. And, you know, I would mm -hmm. repent and humbly ask God for forgiveness and guidance. And then I would get off my knees and still beat myself up. Yeah. And it's like, if I ask God to forgive me and he can forgive me, why is it so hard for me to forgive myself? Yeah. So, you know, learn to forgive yourself. And like she said, get back up. Don't stay down. Don't let the devil defeat you by you staying down and you beating yourself up for things that you've done that you are sorry for and that you've already asked for forgiveness for. The mm -hmm. thing is, is to learn from those mistakes and do better. Yeah. Keep right. making forward strides, but make each stride better than the one before. Um, and that's, yeah, the, before, that's the key yeah. to it. So um, I'm so happy that everybody was able to tune in with me today. Thank you so much. Again, this is Faithfully Her. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments. You can always reach me at faithfullyher at, at gmail.com faithfullyher at gmail.com. You can also find me on Facebook um, at Faithfully Her is the Facebook group. So please join, 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 and let's continue this topic later as the week goes on, okay? Thank you, Whitney thank Monique. You so much. I'm so You're happy. Welcome. And thank you again for just gracing us with your, with your presence. I really appreciate you, sister. No problem. I'm glad to be a part of it. <laughs> okay. And to everybody else, have a blessed week in Christ. Love you. Bye.